വെൽക്കം ടു ജിയോജി സ്പോട്ട് ലൈറ്റ് There are news and reports about India emerging as an economic superpower. Recently, IMF reported that India will become the third largest economy in the world by 2028. Jiojit Chief Investment Strategist, Dr. VK Vijayumar, join us to share his views. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you, Abhilash. So, there are reports from some other institutions projecting India to become a $7 to $8 trillion economy by 2031. Is this achievable? Uh, yes, uh, India has the potential to be the fastest growing large economy in the world for many years to come. This projection of India as the third largest economy by 2028 is the projection by the IMF, International Monetary Fund. So India is presently the fifth largest economy in the world after the US, Japan, uh, no, second is China, Japan, Germany, India is in the fifth position. By 2028, India will overtake uh, Germany and Japan and become the third largest economy in the world. The reason is very simple. Uh, developed countries like uh, Japan and uh, Germany particularly uh, do not have the potential to grow very fast. Japan has uh, unfavorable demographics. Their population is declining. So for them, 1.5 percentage growth is the norm. Germany also at best can grow by 2 percentage. But India has the potential to grow at uh, around 7 percentage. Therefore, it is easy for India to overtake uh, Germany and Japan by 2028. This is certainly going to happen. But I think uh, we should go beyond 2025. We should look beyond 2025, 28 and uh, look at 2032. 2032 is 10 years from now. By 2032, India would be a, around the $8 trillion economy. At $8 trillion, there will be phenomenal Indian growth in the Indian economy in the next 10 years. So yes, the third largest economy by 2028 and an $8 trillion dollar economy by 2032, these are certainly achievable. And what is its economic significance? Well, that is the most important thing. What is the significance of this phenomenal potential growth for investors? That is the most important thing. Now, it is important to understand that when we speak about the third largest economy, a $3.2 trillion economy now, an $8 trillion dollar economy by 2032, we are talking about absolute GDP. We are talking about the GDP expressed in dollars. In per capita income, we are far behind. USA's per capita income is $62,000. In Germany, it is around $44,000. Japan, it is $35,000. Even in China, it is $11,000. We are far behind. Uh, we are a poor country. Our per capita income is presently only at around uh, $2,200, around $2,200. But uh, when we progress to an $8 trillion economy by 2032, our per capita income is going to increase at, at a very impressive rate. Estimates are that by 2032, when we have this uh, $8 trillion economy, India's per capita income would be around $5,000. Now it is $2,200. Converted into rupees, it is roughly 1,60,000 rupees per head. By 2032, it can be 4 lakh rupees per head. So when we experience this explosive growth in per capita income, there will be a phenomenal growth in consumption in India, phenomenal growth in demand in India, many businesses will do exceedingly well. I'll give you a couple of examples. Presently, only 8 lakh families in India have cars. So if this 8 percentage, not 8 lakh families, 8 percentage of the families in India have cars. If this figure doubles to 16 percentage, which is very easy, then the demand for cars will double from what it is now, right? We are going to have a doubling of cars uh, in India uh, in the next uh, 10 years, right? Doubling of not annual demand for cars, 
a doubling of the total cars that we have in India. Similarly, take the case of other white goods. Take the group of three white goods, air conditioners, televisions and refrigerators. Even now, if you take these three as a group, only 16% of the families in India have all these three, air conditioners, refrigerators and television sets. So this 16% can easily double to 32% and that will unleash phenomenal demand for air conditioners, refrigerators, um, television sets, other commodities like washing machines, etc. Crows, several millions will be in demand. So these businesses will do well. Not just these businesses, other businesses also, financial services, IT services, India will be a major, will continue to be a major exporter of IT services. So this is going to uh, increase the potential of businesses. Businesses will grow hugely. I will give you a very important statistics. In 1991, when we started liberalization in India, in the year 91-92, the net profit of all companies in India put together was 7,400 crores. Net profit of all companies put together. This year, FI23, the net profit of Nifty 50 companies will be around 6.5 lakh crores. There are many companies in India making more than 10,000 crores or rupees in, in one quarter. I told you about 7,400 crores profits for all companies in one year. Companies like Reliance, State Bank of India, TCS and HDFC Bank make more than 10,000 crore in net profit in three months, right? And this is again going to explode hugely. So demand for all the products and services are going to explode and the market capitalization of uh, Indian corporate sector, companies listed in the market, their market capitalization is going to explode from the present around $3.3 trillion to around $10 trillion. So market cap growing from $3.3 trillion now to around $10 trillion by 2032 is a historic opportunity, a rare historic opportunity. In simple language, this means the wealth that is going to be created through the stock market in the next 10 years in India would be greater than all the wealth that has been created in the stock market all these years. This is a great historic opportunity. Investors should seize that opportunity. What should investors do? Sir? Well, uh, investors need not do anything very, very complex or sophisticated. They should follow a very simple investment strategy. First, they should not do anything stupid. They should not go after cheap, low-grade stocks, which many retail investors do. They should refrain from gambling in the market, gambling in derivatives and day trading that can be very bad for the financial health of the traders. They should invest in high-quality stocks, stocks with great potential and with a proven and high-quality management. They should invest in these stocks for the long term, invest in installments. The investors do not have the expertise to invest in the market directly. If they can't pick and choose uh, stocks which have the potential to grow very fast, they can simply invest through the mutual funds, systematic investment plan through equity mutual funds, hybrid mutual funds, etc. would be a very simple strategy which all investors can pursue. If you follow this strategy, investors can laugh all the way to the bank in next 10 years. Thank you very much.